Sharpen. Masters of Surgical Education. Hi, my name is Samuel George. I'm a consultant plastic surgeon and I specialize in hand surgery and peripheral nerve surgery. And I'll talk to you today about performing a nail bed repair. So nail bed injuries are quite common and they are usually from crush to the fingertips, which could be crushed in doors, car doors, um, hammer, heavy things falling on your finger and things like this. They can cause a little fracture called a tuck fracture, um, which usually we don't need to do much about and it can disrupt the nail bed. So the nail bed going through anatomy consists of your nail itself, the epinicule fold, which is where the nail comes from. And then you have the germinal matrix and the sterile matrix, which is, makes up your nail bed. The germinal matrix has the cells which actually make the nail grow. And if this is disrupted, you can get disruptions of your nail and or what we call dystrophic nail growth, which looks a bit odd, but doesn't cause any functional problems usually. Now, the other parts you need to think about in the fingertip are the hyponychium and the paronychium. And so you have the eponychium, which is a bit above the nail, the paronychium, which is a bit on the side, and then the hyponychium, which is the tip of your pulp underneath the nail. And then you have the pulp, obviously. So what you need to think about when you repair a nail bed is what you're going to do to each of these elements and where the injury is. Usually the injury goes across the nail bed in a simple nail bed um, injury. So what we do is we give local anesthetic to the finger, first a ring block to numb the entire finger. Before doing anything invasive or traumatic, ensure you test that your local anesthetic ring block is working. So we do that and then we apply a digital tourniquet. There are different types of tourniquet. This one is a single silicone band, which is then secured with a mosquito forceps. And then we remove the nail. The most atraumatic way to remove the nail I found is to use a tenotomy or iris scissors with the tip of the scissors actually pointing upwards away from the nail bed, a single pass and then spread to detach the nail from the nail bed. Now, if the nail is completely detached, you can remove the nail with some forceps, like we are demonstrating with the distal nail here. With the proximal one, it's still connected to the epinicule fold. So with this one, you use a mosquito and grip the side of the nail and then rotate the nail slowly. And it basically atraumatically removes the nail without causing any avulsion. And then what you need to do is debride any loose tissue or dead tissue or devitalized tissue. And then you need to get into the fracture and really wash everything out. So you need to open the finger out and scrape out all the little bits and ensure that the fracture is completely clean if there is a fracture. So when debriding the nail bed, you want to ensure that you take just a very little sliver of the edge of the lacerated nail bed to ensure that you removed any devitalized tissue. You can remove bits of skin if there is a skin laceration on the pulp or the paronychium or the epinychial fold as well. When washing it out, you want to actually flex the pulp so you open the wound up and you expose the fracture and the bone. Give this a good wash into the bony fracture fragment and not just on the surface. You then want to use a Mitchell's trimmer or just the metal needle and scrape out the fracture and ensure you perform a thorough debridement. After this, you just want to examine the epinicule fold to make sure it is completely open, undamaged and unscarred. If not, this might scar down and stop the nail from growing adequately. After you've done that, we wash everything with saline and then what we do is we put some very fine sutures into the nail bed to repair the nail bed with usually 6O micro repeat. Now the nail bed is extremely fragile so you want to be sure that you a traumatically suture this you're passing the needle and just following the curve of the needle in a straight line. When you pull the suture Ensure you pull it and use your needle holder as a pulley so you don't pull at an angle. When you tie the suture, you're just gently tying it and you're not pulling it too tight or it'll just cut through the nail bed. When you cut the suture, just cut it close to the nail bed to not leave a long end. Now, when you suture the nail bed, as it is very fragile and these needles are cutting needles, you want to ensure that you use an acute angle to go in to achieve eversion. 
while the needle is in the nail bed, you want no movement at the nail bed at all, and just follow the curve of the needle as it comes out. You want to just push if you haven't got enough of a distal end and then curve the needle out without moving the needle at all in any direction apart from the curve of the needle. And again, you tie the suture gently, ensuring just adequate approximation without it being too tight as to cut through the nail bed and cut the sutures. Yeah, again, we see just follow the curve of the needle and ensure it curves in and curves out of the nail bed. Any slight movement, and when you tie the suture as well, ensure you're tight at the level of the nail bed. If you pull the suture up, it will just evolve out of the nail bed. Now you have to think about how many sutures you need. You only need two or three, usually if for an entire transverse laceration. You don't want to fill the area with sutures. At the end of the procedure, you want to clean the nail and replace the nail onto the nail bed. Now, there is some evidence to show that it doesn't really make a difference if you replace the nail or not. I like to replace the nail because apart from just splinting that nail fold open, which is not that necessary, it does protect the nail bed a little bit. And the nail bed can be very sensitive if there's contact once it's healed until the new nail grows. And this old nail actually stops it from being painful when there's contact in it. So what we do is we just put the nail back in. Now there are two ways to secure the nail here. You can use a little figure of eight suture with a Vicar repeat, or you can put a little dot of glue. I prefer putting the little dot of glue as to not to disrupt the epinechial fold and the hyponychium with sutures and leaving the sutures in for too long. So what I do is I basically put a very, very tiny dot of glue underneath the nail and it sits there and it, that's all you need. If you put too much glue, that can cause problems like infections and things like that. And then put a finger dressing on and usually the dressing is quite stuck on because of a bit of bleeding and things at the tip of the finger so it's actually better to see these patients in two weeks as opposed to one week now there are many ways to apply a finger dressing the way i like to do it is to take a rectangular piece of mepitel which is a non-adherent layer and make two slits in the middle you then put half of it on the dorsal surface and fold the ends down and then fold it onto the volar surface and then fold the two ends up and this nicely will surround a cylindrical finger like this. Do the same thing with the gauze. So I cut it so it's relatively square as you don't want a long length you want half the length that will go down the area that you want. And you make two slits again. Again, fold it at the midpoint where you've made your slit, fold the two wings down, and then fold it down to the volar side, and then fold the other two wings upwards. Now with the remaining slit that I cut away, I usually use this to create a little bit more padding. And I will use this extra piece of gauze just to go over the finger to create a little bit more padding, a little bit more pressure. And then I like to use a tubic grip type dressing to go over the whole thing. And there are different versions of this as well, but this seems to be an easy way to just very elegantly cover the entire finger. There is a version of this called the Adaptix dressing, which has two layers of this which roll down, which I feel is not enough for a finger sometimes. So I use this. After we've completely dressed the finger, this is the point I take the tonic aid down. Usually this procedure should take around 10 minutes. And with the tonic aid down, you can see there's no bleeding at the tip as everything is nice and padded and covered. I then apply some tape. Now when you apply tape here, you want to ensure that you tape the dressing to the hand as cylindrical dressings like this can easily slip off the finger. 
especially with your non-adherent Mepitel layer. So for extra security, I usually put a length of tape going all the way down the dorsum around the tip and around the volar side of the finger at the same time. When you take the dressing off, it's much more comfortable for the patient to remove the dressing at two weeks when the um, blood clots and the dry blood detaches a little bit from the finger. It's easier to take everything off then. Um, at one week, it can be a bit painful. At four weeks, you can see that the new nail is starting to grow from the Epinica fold and the old nail is still stuck on with the glue. Sharpen. Masters of Surgical Education.